I drank every single tequila out there, or at least every single tequila that I could get my hands on. After I drank each of these tequilas, I ranked them in a tier list from F all the way up to A. All right, let's get started. Am I supposed to do this all in one go? <laughs> I have to get back to work. All right, let's start off with one of my absolute favorite and one that I use every single day. That is Cimarron. Cimarron is my go-to well tequila for many, many reasons. It is confirmed additive free, but the best part about it is its price. Both of these liters, yes, big old bottles, cost around anywhere between 20 and $25. So you get an absolute bang for your buck. One of the main reasons why I love Cimarron is that even though it is a inexpensive tequila, it doesn't taste that way. It has a full, robust, full-bodied flavor to it and really great spice notes to it. And it really stands up incredibly well in a cocktail. This is one that I use literally every single day. Almost all of my tequila cocktails at my bar are built around either the Repo or the Blanco of this tequila because it's very cost effective. Taking all of that into consideration, I think we have to give this one a B. All right, next up is Patron. I don't have a bottle of the regular Patron. I just have this one that was Asian Cherry Cask. Patron, I'm very divided on. Patron is a brand that is super easy to find. It's one of the most popular brands on the planet. It's now owned by Bacardi and they really were trailblazers and trendsetters in the tequila space. They really helped popularize tequila into this current tequila boom, but I'm a little divided on it. At the regular Patron, it's okay. It'll do a job if it's the only thing available. I think it's fine. This sherry cask aged one is, let's try it. And then we'll, we'll talk about that. And then we'll rank up. Definitely smells of sherry. Also tastes a lot like sherry. Cherry's a hard flavor. It's a little minerally, it's a little saline-like, it's a little salty. This one's actually quite enjoyable to sip on its own. I think it's kind of an innovative uh, idea and I quite like that. If I had to rank the regular Patron, I would probably put Patron as a C. Uh, I don't love its flavor, it's not super robust. It kind of doesn't really taste too, too much uh, like tequila, but it's not terrible, it's not bad. The Sherry Cask one, I think it's an innovative, interesting idea and I think it's you know helping kind of push tequila producers to try interesting things. I just, if you like sherry, you'll probably enjoy this. I'm not the hugest fan of sherry, but let's go, let's pretend this was just a regular Patron, so let's see. And we can't talk about Patron without talking about Siete Leguas. Siete Leguas is a brand that actually was the original producer of what we know as Patron today. Uh, these guys, up until I think, if I'm not mistaken, 2002, used to produce the original Patron. And that was when it was really great. They started becoming really popular. And then in 2002, they, set, they went their separate ways and they continued to produce their brand, uh, Siete Leguas, which is absolutely incredible. It's such a great historic brand. They've been around for so, so, so many years. I'm not sure which one to try. Let's try the Inye. Wow, that just, that smells incredible. Easy, this is an easy one for me. They are genuinely one of my favorite brands on the planet. Uh, cost effective, not too expensive, amazing product in the bottle. Uh, you always get high quality from them. A, easy A, super easy A, the easiest A, and, and not recommend them. Uh, and moving on to the next tequila we have, Casamigos. This is one of the most popular brands of tequila on the planet. So many people are obsessed with this brand. Casamigos was created by George Clooney and one of his rich buddies many years ago, and it then sold to Diageo for $1 billion. They are also responsible for the current celebrity tequila boom that we are experiencing in the tequila industry at the moment. And I've had many thoughts on this tequila, as if you've watched this channel, you might know, but what about what's in the actual bottle? Well, all right, let's drink the Reposado. Also, shout out to Doug from the Agave Social Club for this amazing Glen Karen tasting glass. Uh, it's really coming in handy today. On the nose, you get this really uh, sweet aroma right off the bat. It smells kind of like a little bit like vanilla or like candy in a way. Uh, it just tastes, you know what it tastes like? It tastes like one of those like, like really sugary, like, um, caramel like hard candies that just like but not in a good way uh, it also reminds me of, like a vanilla tootsie roll again not in a good way i want to give it an f just for the harm that this has done to the tequila industry it's made so many other celebrity tequilas pop up the juice inside the bottle is not good it's overly sugarified it's fake tasting it tastes like vanilla it's, it's just not what tequila is supposed to taste like we're gonna put this firmly in f 
Next up is 818 by Kendall Jenner. She's one of the Kardashians. Uh, uh, eh. And uh, this has also been popping up everywhere. Let's taste it. Yay. We're gonna taste the Blanco. Got a sweet aroma to it. Uh, even the Blanco is sweet. It doesn't taste like agave, just sweet tastes really sweet and just like, uh, it just tastes like candy. It's just, if you like the Kardashians, if you like the celebrities, do whatever you want with your own money, but this is not really tequila. It's gross, full of additives. Again, another solid F. Like if I could give this a dumpster rating, even below F, I would do that. So yeah, rating for 818, dumpster. Next up is Mijenta. As we were talking about 818, everyone talks about, oh, you gotta support women-owned businesses. If you really wanna support, women in tequila, Mijenta is a much better way to go than 818. Mijenta, the master distiller is Ana Maria Romero Mena, and she is a female master distiller, which in the tequila industry is quite rare. And she makes some absolutely kick-ass stuff, especially this uh, brand right here. What I love about them is they are really focused on the environment and they're trying to do everything the right way. And they are confirmed additive free. And so great to taste. It's really nice and easy. It has these amazing spice notes to it, but it's a really good sipper. I could sip this, I could put it in a cocktail. It's robust enough to go in a cocktail, but not overpoweringly so. And you know, it comes in, if I'm not mistaken, anywhere between like 45 and $60, depending on where you get it. I think I've actually seen it going for like 65. With all of that going into consideration, this is definitely a B category tequila in my opinion. Definitely one to try. High B, B plus. Cascanes. Cascanes is a brand that is relatively new and it is been making a lot of waves. It's become very, very popular. They have a couple of different expressions. A lot of it comes down to the ABV and the proof. They have a number seven, a number nine, a number 10 Blanco. Those are all referring to their, uh, their proofs. And you know, they have some, like for example, the number nine is their 50% ABV. They have a number seven, which is 40% ABV. Their number 10 is their still strength, which is about 55% ABV. And they also have their Reposado. So this is their number seven Reposado, which is 40% uh, ABV. And it's a Reposado uh, lightly rested. These guys are, of course, 100% confirmed added to free by Tequila Matchmaker, and they have quickly become one of my favorite tequila brands uh, to sip on and to enjoy. Oh, wait, I'm not supposed to give my thoughts quite yet. I can't really hide it with this one. This one's really, really good. Let's taste the Reposado. What I love about them is that generally, Cascanes, it's been described as like an agave bomb. It's like a very in-your-face, robust agave flavor from the outset, from the very beginning. And the Reposado is incredible. It gives you that amazing, robust agave flavor with those great barrel notes. But the tequila is really the star of the show. The Truthfully, it is one of my genuinely favorite brands on the planet. The only knock that I can give it, but I don't really want to call it a knock because I, I think that it is worth it because it is that good of a tequila, is its price point. It is a little bit more expensive than other brands. It comes in anywhere between I think like 90 and like $130 depending on which bottle. And so it isn't the most cost effective tequila, right? But for the quality that it is, I definitely, in my opinion, think it's worth it. For me, this is going to be our first entry into the A top tier category, our first day. All right, and moving on to now one of the most popular tequilas on the planet for God knows what reason. Oh, and if it looks like my hair is different or it's a different day, it's not. What are you, a cop? Leave me alone. Jose Cuervo, uh, if you've been to college in the United States and you drank a tequila, I have a sneaking suspicion that you've had a run in with this brand. Just the thought of it makes me shudder, but let's, uh, oh God, let's give it a taste. Oh. Uh Sorry, I'm not supposed to react beforehand. Oh man, I'm, I'm sorry, Doug, for putting this in your tasting glass. Uh, uh, it, it, it tastes like cough medicine and not in a good way. I don't even know if there is a good way to taste like cough medicine, but God, that's putrid. That is horrendous. That is, Oh man, cannot stand that. That's a that's a no no. That's a that's an F. That's a garbage. Absolute absolute F. And now let's move along to a tequila that not many people know is actually made at the exact same place that the Jose Cuervo is made. Kevin Hart's Gran Coramina. 
I've actually done a, a review on this recently on my channel, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on my full thoughts. I'm just gonna taste it and give you a grade. But just so you know, the same people who make this, make this. Do with that what you will. Mm -hmm. Damn it. Overly sweet, sugar-fied, tastes like melted cotton candy. Bottle's pretty. D. Yeah, D. All right, and moving on to uh, another brand that was actually distilled by someone I mentioned earlier. We we're gonna talk about Tequila Corrido. Uh, I mentioned when we were talking about Mi Genta, uh, Ana Maria Romero Mena as the master distiller for that brand. She is also the master distiller for this brand. Uh, I have the Blanco, the Repo, and the Añejo here. They're not super duper expensive. They're a relatively well-priced tequila. Uh, I believe the Blanco comes in as, a, as, as little as 45, and I think maybe the Añejo is like 60, 60 something. They're a confirmed additive free, and uh, they've got this really cool kind of like musical uh, theme going along. Uh, they have, you know, guitar picks on the, on the bottles. Well, let's taste the Añejo. Uh... It's nice and caramelly. Uh, you get that nice oaked flavor. Uh, the agave isn't as forward in the Añejo. It kind of, the barrel kind of overtakes it a little bit. And so overall, what do I think? I think that Tequila Corrido is a very good serviceable option. Not bad. It's, it's distilled by someone who knows a lot about tequila. I think that it just lacks a slight amount of flavor for my taste. And I'm going to put it in the C range. And I don't want that to be like a, a diss at all. I think that it's nothing wrong with them. I don't want it to be sound like a diss. So like a C, high C, C plus. All right. Talking about budget options, we have Tres Agaves. Uh, this bottle and brand is I think for the price, they, oh wait, I'm sorry, one moment. Let's try it first, right? So they are confirmed additive free and they are 100% organic. I have the, the Añejo here. Wow. Pretty good of, amount of that like agave right up front. The barrel does give it a nice, subtle, caramelly flavor, but you still get a lot of that agave. But the thing that wins out for this entire brand for me is its price. It's such a great budget option. Uh, the Blanco, you can get it, I believe, somewhere in the $20 range. Um, I believe I paid about $36 or $40 for this Añejo. And so in terms of absolute value and bang for your buck, this Agaves is another one that I'm going to have to put up there with Cimarron, um, though it's not as robust and in your face as Cimarron. So, you know, if you're looking for a really great budget Añejo, the Tres Agaves is where you're at. This is a B plus, easy. And the next tequila we were going to talk about was Don Julio 1942, but I think I must have misplaced the bottle. Um, if you want to check out my whole thoughts on Don Julio's 1942, I have this other video that you can check out right here, but my letter grade for Don Julio as a brand in total is probably going to be a solid D. The 1942, it's not that it tastes bad, it's that it doesn't taste like anything. It's devoid of flavor. It's ultra smooth, super smooth, but it doesn't really taste like tequila shit. So Don Julio, D. But what I do have here is Lalo, and Lalo is a very interesting brand because uh, Don Julio today is owned by Diageo, but the gentleman who created Lalo is actually the original Don Julio's grandson. And so this has this brand has a really interesting story. They're really trying to create tequila in that ancestral way and keep their family's legacy going, albeit with a different brand and a whole other vibe and a whole new style. And so uh, Lalo, we're going to give this one a taste. What I think is really cool is that they only make a Blanco, or at least they only make a Blanco for right now. Just a beautiful, absolutely beautiful bottle. I think it's gorgeous. I love the square shape. It looks very rustic. It's not too showy. It's a little bit minimalistic. It's something that's right up my alley. So, all right, let's give that a taste. I love it because it's nice and bright. It's got these citrusy flavors to it. The finish on it gives you some of that spice. It's very robust and agave forward. It's clean. It's incredible. I can imagine this being incredible in a cocktail. I can imagine it being amazing to sip on on its own. Price point is good. It's 45 bucks, I think, roughly. I'm only going to give it a B plus because it doesn't like absolutely knock me over with flavor. It's very, very good. It's incredible. It's like top tier B plus A minus. It's, it's just a very solid, incredible tequila. I love it. And it's like, you know, if you're making margaritas at home, go for this. This is, this is where it's at. Yeah. All right, moving right along. We're gonna do Tequila 1800, uh, another brand that you can pretty much find in so many different places. It's so popular, uh, God knows why. Probably marketing budget, uh, but yeah. Oh gosh, let's give this one a little tasty poo. Oof, very harsh ethanol, like alcohol -y aroma right off the nose. Not very enjoyable.
Yeah, that's a big time no. That's a no no. It's not as bad as Jose Cuervo. If that if that helps, that's a D. That's a definitely a D. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next up is Yayo. Yayo is a relatively new uh, brand of tequila that just came out recently. It's additive free. It is uh, relatively inexpensive, not too you know not too pricey. And my only real knock on, on on this is the design is that I find it it's not very appealing to me. I don't love the design of the bottle. I guess a lot of people are like, who, who cares, man? Well, I do. I care. I used to be a graphic designer, so I do care. Uh yeah. Wow. Nice, bright, citrusy. Really good. Nice, easy sipper. Not too harsh. Doesn't have that harsh, uh, like, alcohol kind of burn. Really nice. And, uh, yeah, pretty pretty good. You know what I mean? Like, it's very solid, very dependable. Definitely a C. And again, I don't mean it as like a, a diss to call it a C. All right. <laughs> Our buddy LeBron James Los Lobos 1707 tequila, which, you know, only sort of resembles a pine salt bottle, which, you know, definitely makes me excited to drink it, I guess. Oh God. Uh, oh, I can't. I can't. That's enough. Oh, no. No. You know what? I feel like I was unfair to Yayo. We're going to upgrade it to a B. It's good. It's solid. Don't want to put it in, in the C category because it's a good value for, for what it is. So give it a B. Next up is Tequila Cabal. When I first discovered this brand, I immediately was like, wow, that's very gimmicky. You know, big ass, big old horse head. Like, it's a nice shaped bottle, but like, are you hiding something? Why are you doing something so ordinate? And then I kind of discovered the history of their family and being and their family being involved in uh, horse sports and horse racing and things along those lines. And so it's kind of an homage to their family. And then, you know, it didn't really erase the uh, my feelings of like gimmickiness, but let's give it a try. So we're gonna try the Blanco first and then maybe we'll sip the Repo. Nice, easy to drink. It's very subtle as it starts and it kind of builds in your mouth. More of that agave flavor kind of comes forward as it's like finishing. It's really nice. It's deep, it's bold. It's great for a Blanco. I think it's very interesting to sip on. And it's not as like citrusy as some other, uh, other Blancos, but it's very, very fascinating. Uh, and our little horsey, horsey friend, Reposado. It's hard to hold it. I don't love the, don't love that, but. It is what it is. Oh yeah, now that, that's incredible. That's a really good Reposado. You get this almost chocolatey kind of flavor from the barrel and uh, the, the, the Añejo is even more intense in that flavor, but you still, the, to, the agave doesn't shy away. It doesn't get overpowered by the barrel and it's really enjoyable to sip on on its own. And truthfully, I was eventually convinced that it wasn't just a gimmick. It ends up being a pretty little bottle, but the juice inside is very, very good. Oh, shh, shh. It's okay. It's okay. All right, let's move on to the next one. And for this one, I'm going to give it a B. Very solid. I think the price is a little bit higher, uh, but very enjoyable. If you can get your hands on it, I do recommend it. B. Right, let's talk about some celebrity-backed brands that are actually decent. Uh, we have Codigo, which at one point was owned by George Strait, and then we have Insolito, which is apparently a part owned by the band called Midland. I don't know who that is, so I don't know. Don't judge me. Um, both of these are actually not bad. Uh, let's talk about the Codigo first. I have all of their different expressions here. They even have a uh, uh, basically a rosa reposado, which is like, a, a rosé aged tequila and it is additive free um and it, they recently were sold if i'm not mistaken to another company so i don't know if george Strait is even known anymore but technically they are they were for a very long time celebrity owned but the star of the show for me is their still strength uh i love still strength tequilas i think that they provide some of the most uh natural and and, and like intense flavors from a tequila and they're my usually my favorites to sip on uh, so let's give that a nice little sippy sip. Oh, wow. Yeah, intense, higher in proof, very strong. This bottle is super enjoyable. Now, if this bottle was the only thing they made, this would have a much higher rating. Um, not to say that these are bad. Uh, I just find that their brand is a little bit overpriced for what it is. 
Um, you can regularly find the bottles for like 60 or $70. And like, you know, there's other tequilas that I would buy at that price before I bought this. Um, so definitely going into the C category. As for Insolito, I genuinely really enjoy this brand. Um, I don't know how much involvement this band has with the production, but uh, the one bottle I don't have here, which is the Añejo, uh, was my favorite. Unfortunately, it fell off of my back bar and broke uh, when one of my bartenders was uh, grabbing it, but it is what it is. Uh, the Repo is still an incredible uh, option, so let's give this one a sip. It's interesting. It's got a different kind of salinity, almost minerality to it from the Repo. You get some of that, the barrel notes. Uh, the Añejo was out of this world. The Blanc was very good as well. It's bright and citrusy. Um, I give them a B, actually, surprisingly. Probably the highest. I, I never thought I'd give like a celebrity back spirit, but I never thought I'd see the day, but here we are, a B. And for a, hev a real heavy hitter, Tequila Ocho. Tequila Ocho is an incredible tequila. Uh, it is also produced by Carlos Camarena, which is the same guy who produces El Tesoro. And it is a brand that has been around for quite a little bit. Um, I really, really enjoy it. The Repo is incredible. Uh, Actually, all of the things that they make is incredible. That's so great. It's almost got like a peppery flavor to it. It's bright, it's incredible. If you haven't had it, what are you doing, man? Go and get some. This is an A, A plus easily, without a doubt. So speaking of another brand that isn't too, too expensive and makes really good stuff, uh, El Tequileño. El Tequileño's Platino line or their Platinum line uh, is their more higher end stuff. They do have like a Misto line, which I actually don't mind. Uh, normally I don't like Misto tequilas, meaning that they're not 100% agave. Um, I think that their Misto is actually very flavorful, doesn't taste fake, and it's really good price for the, for the budget. It makes great margaritas and it comes in at like 18 bucks a bottle. But their Platino line is usually a little bit higher, more like 40, 50, 60 dollars. Their Añejo here, is very, very good. They've been making tequila for a very long time. Uh, and I really do enjoy their stuff. So let's uh, give this a sip. Wow. Full bodied, robust, good caramelly flavors from the barrel. Tastes a little bit like a whiskey in a good way. Um, very, very good. The whole brand, the whole thing is definitely a B plus. It had, you knew it was coming and it had to come at some point. Uh, Tequila Fortaleza. I've spoken so much about this. I don't want to spend too much time on this brand. If it could be in its own tier, in my opinion, it's that good. Uh, so you know what? We'll put this in S, but now it's going to throw off all the other ratings. Well, that's your problem. So this is going into S. I've spoken about this at length and there's so many other videos that you can watch on it over here. But while you're here, let's talk about something very special that they do. This is Fortaleza's Winter Blend 2022. I only got two bottles of it. This is the last little remaining bit of it that I have. There's very little left. And the Winter Blend is that they take their still strength and then they age it in special barrels. And it's only a special amount that they make every year. And it's very limited. And they release it once a year. And this was the 2022 edition. And it is incredible. But let's sip it and talk about it. This is the last little bit that I have. I'm just kidding. I'm saving the other bottle I got for my wedding. This is incredible. This is absolutely fucking incredible. It's amazing. That's goddamn. Wow. S tier. That's Yeah, that's it. S tier. We're making its own tier. That's where that's how good it is. And you know what? While we're here, let's talk about Hit Cuatro. Hit Cuatro is another absolutely amazing brand of tequila. It is from... One of my favorite distilleries in all of Mexico. This brand itself is one of my favorite things coming out of Mexico along with the Fortaleza. So before we even taste it, I'm going to tell you right now, this is going to occupy seat number dos over on the S tier right next to Fortaleza. This stuff is absolutely incredible. It is made at a distillery known as El Pandillo, and they pump out some of the best brands in the market today. Fortaleza only makes Fortaleza, but this distillery makes Hit Cuatro and a couple of other brands, and each one of them is very unique and different because of the different water sources that they use. One of the things that I love about Hit Cuatro the most is its minerality and how it's almost salty. It's like perfect for oysters or seafood, and it gets this almost mineral, almost salty kind of savory flavor from their water source. And it's so good and so different, and it really is pushing the bounds of what a tequila is, and it's incredible. God damn, yeah, that's 
Jesus. Anyway, I might stop the video here and just go drink this, but I won't do that to you guys. You deserve more. Speaking of brands made at El Pandillo, we have Volans. Uh, Volans is, again, a brand that is made at the same distillery as He Cuatro, so you're probably going to be good stuff. Um, the reason why I like it a lot is that it's not as well known as He Cuatro. It's usually easier to get. He Cuatro is suffering from some of the same issues that Fortaleza is, where you're not really able to find it in liquor stores and stuff like that. Um, but Volans, I've not had that issue. They are also making really incredible stuff. They have a good minerality to them. We're going to taste the reposado here. It's not as minerally as the Hecuatro, but it has really great notes of citrus and kind of fruit almost. And it's just really good. Pretty much, if we're being honest, anything out of El Pandillo is probably going to sit in the A category for me. Volans, A, for sure. There's just A. You know what? Since we added an S tier, I feel like it's really unfair for Cascanas, which is one of my favorite brands, to sit alone in the A tier. Let's bump this one up to S. They are amazing. S tier. All right, let's talk about Inspiro Tequila. Uh, Inspiro is another brand that was master distilled by Ana Maria Romero Mena. So I had good expectations of this one going in. Uh, so they have a Blanco and they also have a uh, Rosa Reposado, which is an Asian former rosé uh, barrels. It smells like rosé, it doesn't really taste like rosé. We're going to sip on the Blanco instead. I want to know about more of their actual agave flavor. So it's good. I think that it's not the most unique tequila out there. I think it's beautiful. It's all women-owned. I love the story of it. It's women-owned. It's women, you know, distilled for the most part. And every step of their business has women involved, which I love. I think the story of that is amazing. As for the product itself, I think it's it's good. It's nothing groundbreaking. It's nothing amazing. Uh, I think the Rosa de Posado is very enjoyable to sip on its own. The Blanco is a nice, easy sipper. They're great options too. I definitely would give this one a B. And if you've been waiting, we now have Terramana Tequila by The Rock. Uh, celebrity tequilas, man. Another one to try. Oh my God, it smells so rancid. Ugh, ugh. It just tastes like vanilla and cotton candy. It doesn't taste like agave. How many of these terrible brands are they gonna keep pumping out and just attach it to a celeb? It's a D, it's an F, it's, who cares? It's awful. And honestly, to wash out my mouth from that experience, let's talk about El Tesoro. El Tesoro is an amazing brand. It is such an incredible brand. I genuinely love them. They are distilled by the same person who's responsible for distilling Tequila Ocho, Carlos Camarena. And this dude is just a OG in the tequila space and everything he makes is just incredible. And while we can taste the Blanco, I'm gonna tell you right off the bat that this is definitely an S tier tequila. It is super robust, full of flavor and just absolutely amazing. It's quite frankly, one of my Absolute favorite tequilas to sip on ever. Um, I really can't recommend it enough. El Tesoro. And honestly, that right there might be enough, but let's taste the most expensive tequila I have in my collection. And that would be the El Tesoro 85th Anniversary Edition that was aged in Vormer Booker's bourbon barrels. This was a special edition tequila that is, at retail, this is like close to $700 a bottle. It's not very full. I've enjoyed quite a bit of it especially sharing it with friends at my bar who really enjoy this kind of thing. And now we're going to taste this. Oh, that was a big pour. Oh God. All right. Well, more for me. Wow. That is heavenly. You definitely can taste the taste of the former bourbon barrels, but it doesn't overshadow or overpower the tequila flavor. That still is right there in that tequila. It's super enjoyable. It's super caramelly. It's Stupidly good, man. I could. You ever wanted to like carry a bottle of, of tequila or are you sane? Because this right here, man, is so good. If you can get your hands on it, I'm not telling you to go shell out $700, but if you have that kind of money and you want to, I don't think you'll be disappointed in this. I feel very lucky to even have this, to be perfectly honest with you. And so I feel disrespectful to try and like sell it. So I don't. I just sip on it and share it with people who I know will appreciate it. S, S, all day S. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, uh, there you have it. I tasted all of these tequilas and ranked them. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're interested in me ranking more things, I have a whole other video right over here that you can check out where I ranked every single classic cocktail. Now, I need to get back to work and I don't know how I'm going to do that because this was a lot of tequila. Cheers.